Good morning students. Today we are going to learn a lesson that will certainly make us laugh out loud. The title of the story is The Night the Ghost Got In written by James Grover Thurber. Let me quickly walk through the biography of the author. James Grover Thurber is the 20th century writer, an American cartoonist, author, humorist, journalist and playwright. He was best known for his cartoons and short stories. They were published mainly in the New York magazine such as the Catbird Seat. He was one of the most popular humorists of his time as he celebrated the comic frustrations and eccentricities. Eccentricities means strangeness of ordinary people. So he was celebrated for his wit and humor in his work. Now, I want to introduce the synopsis of the lesson. It's a bit long lesson. So first I'll introduce the summary to you. Then I'll have a quick read of the lesson. First let me introduce the main characters. Thurber is the narrator. His brother named Herman. Mother. Grandfather. And his father and another brother Roy were out of station. Then another important role is his neighbor Bordwell and his wife. Then the policeman Joe and another policeman, his name is not given. Let me narrate the synopsis of the lesson. The story is an account of a night in Thurber's childhood mixed with fiction. On the night of 17th November 1915, Thurber was taking bath at around 1 o'clock in the night. He heard some steps, footsteps. His father and brother Roy had been to Indianapolis. They were out of station and would be expected back late in the evening. He wraps the towel round his waist and walks out into the hallway but he could see no one. He hears footsteps again. He wakes his brother Herman to help him find out what is really going on. They heard the steps climbing upstairs. The next moment they rush to their rooms and slam the doors. The slamming of the doors aroused their mother. She screamed at her sons. They revealed the truth that they were burglars. At once, his mother, Thurber's mother, opened the window which faced the bedroom windows of their neighbor and threw a shoe at their window to seek help from them. A retired engineer, his name is Bordwell, lives with his wife and is known for his mild attacks. He's a retired engineer. He called the police, who arrives with a few reporters. They inquired everyone in the family and ransacked the floor. Finally, they entered the room where Grandpa was sleeping. The Grandpa ends up shooting a policeman's arm, thinking he's a deserter from Meade's Meade's army. Meade's army, the time the civil war was going on in America, the army men, some of the soldiers deserted the army and left the army. So he thought Meads, the captain's name is Meads, the deserted men have come to attack him. Mistaking that, he started firing at them. The police find no evidence and they leave the place. The whole night was a mess. The next morning, the family doesn't think the grandfather will remember anything. They were taken by surprise. When he sits down and asks what was the re the idea of the cops loitering and making a lot of noise. Now let's read the lesson and find out who the ghost is. For what purpose it visited the house? And whether the ghost is visiting their house every night? Come, let's read the lesson. Students, come. Let's read and enjoy the humor depicted in the lesson. The ghost that got into our house on the night of November 17, 1915 raised such a hullabaloo. Hullabaloo means loud noise of misunderstandings that I am sorry I didn't just let it keep on walking and go to bed. Its advent caused, advent means entry or adventure, caused my mother to throw a shoe through a window of the house next door and ended up with my grandfather shooting a petrol man. Patrolman, policeman. I am sorry, therefore, as I have said, that I ever paid any attention to the footsteps. They began about a quarter past one, one o'clock in the morning, a rhythmic, quick cadenced, quick cadenced rhythmic flow, walking around the right dining room table. 
my mother was asleep in one room upstairs, my brother Herman in another, grandfather was in the attic, attic means loft, in the old walnut bed, which as you will remember, once fell on my father. I had just stepped out of the bathtub and was busy rubbing myself with a towel when I heard the footsteps. They were the steps of a man walking rapidly around the dining table downstairs. So he was in upstairs. Now he hears the footsteps in the downstairs. The light from the bathroom shone down the back steps which dropped directly into the dining room. I could see the faint shine of plates on the plate rail. I couldn't see the table. The steps kept going around and around and around the table. At regular intervals, a board creaked. Creaked means created a high-pitched sound when it was trod upon, when it was walking. I supposed at first that it was my father and my brother Roy who had gone to Indianapolis, India, but were expected home at any time. I suspected next that it was a burglar. It didn't enter my mind until later that it was a ghost. After the walking had gone on for perhaps three minutes, I tiptoed to Herman's room. I hissed in the dark, shaking, shaking him. He said in the low, hopeless tone of a despondent beagle. Despondent means in a low voice. Beagle is a hound or a dog. So like a dog, he is making him slow. He, he fell asleep. So he is not willing to wake up. So he is making a low voice. He always half suspected that something would get him in the night. I told him who I was. There was something downstairs, I said. He got up and followed me to the head of the back staircase. The steps had ceased. Herman looked at me in some alarm. I had only the bath towel around my waist. He wanted to go back to bed. I gripped his arm. There's something down there, I said. Instantly, the steps began again, circled the dining room table like a man running and started up the stairs towards us, heavily, two at a time. Now the sound is trying to, the footsteps are coming upstairs. The light still shone palely down the stairs. We saw nothing coming. We only heard the steps. Herman rushed to his room and slammed the door. I slammed shut the door at the stairs top and held my knee against it. After a long minute, I slowly opened it again. There was nothing there. There was no sound. None of us even heard the ghost again. The slamming, the forceful shutting of the doors had aroused mother. She peered out of her room. What on earth are you boys doing? She demanded. Herman ventured out of his room, ventured means putting his life at risk and coming out of his room. Nothing, he said gruffly, sadly, but he was in, in color a light green. What was all that running around downstairs? Said mother. Mother's, even mother has heard the sound. So, they are sure now, some burglars are inside the house. Even the mother who was sleeping heard the sound of the footsteps. So, she heard the steps too. We just looked at her burglars. She shouted intuitively. Intuitively means without any proper planning. She was screaming. It's a sudden feeling. I tried to quieten her but starting lightly downstairs. Come on Herman, I said. I'll stay with mother. He said she's all excited. Herman is telling, no, no. This boy, Thurber is calling his brother Herman to come along with him. But that boy is a bit frightened. He's saying, no, I will stay with my mother. My mother is already frightened. I stepped back, in, back onto the landing. Don't either of you go a step, said mother. We'll call the police. Since the phone was downstairs, I didn't see how we are going to call the police. Now, did I want the police? But mother made one of her quick, incomparable decisions. She flung up a window of her bedroom, which faced the bedroom windows of the house of a neighbor, picked up a shoe and whamped it through a pane, a pane of glass across the narrow space that separated the two houses. She flung open shoe and she opened the window and took a shoe through at the window of their neighbor. 
glass tingled into a be, into the bedroom tingled means made a ringing sound occupied by a retired retired engraver named Birdwell and his wife so his their neighbor is a retired engraver or you can say engineer living with his wife Birdwell had been for some years in, in a rather in rather a bad way and was subject to mild attacks almost everybody we knew or lived near had had some kind of attacks it was now about 2 o'clock of a moonless night clouds hung back black and low Birdwell was was at the window in a minute, shouting, frothing a little, frothing, agitated, agitated and disturbed a little, shaking his fist. We'll sell the house and go back to Peoria. We could hear Mrs. Bordwell saying, it was some time before mother got through to Bordwell. Burglars, she shouted, burglars in the house. So he was agitated. Mother revealed the truth that there are burglars in their house. Herman and I hadn't dared to tell her that it was not burglars but ghosts, for she was even more afraid of ghosts than of burglars. These two boys suspect that there are, there are ghosts, not burglars, but they are frightened to reveal the truth to the mother. Bordwell at first thought that she meant there were burglars in his house. The neighbor thought the burglars or in their house, but finally he quietened down and called the police for us over an extension phone by his bed. After he had disappeared from the window, mother suddenly made as if to throw another shoe, not because there was further need of it, as she later explained, because the thrill of heaving, throwing a shoe through a window glass had enormously taken her fancy, I prevented her. Once she threw and sought the help, again she is eager to throw just for fun. The police were on hand in a commendably short time. Say they deserve praise. They arrived the scene the next moment as soon as possible. A Ford sedan full of them, two on motorcycles and a petrol wagon with about eight in it and a few reporters. So, troop has come along with the reporters. They began banging at our front door. Flashlights so short streaks of gleam up gleam up and down the walls, across the yard, down the walk, between our house and board bills. Open up, cried a hoarse voice. Hoarse means rough voice. We are men from headquarters. I wanted to go down and now this boy Thurber wanted to go down and let them in. Since they were there, but mother couldn't hear of it. You haven't a stitch on. You, you don't have a cloth because he is wearing a towel around his waist. She pointed out. You'd catch your death. I wound the towel around me again. Finally, the cops put their shoulders to our big heavy front door with its thick beveled glass and broke it in. I could hear a rendering of wood, rending of wood, rending means staring of wood, and a splash of glass on the floor of the hall. Now they entered the house. The lights played all over the living room and crisscrossed nervously in the dining room, stabbed into hallways shot up the front stairs and finally up the back. So they are having flashlights, torchlights in their hands. With that, they are examining each room. They caught me standing in my towel at the top. A heavy policeman bounded up, came to me, bounded up the steps. Who are you? He demanded. I live here, I said. The officer in charge reported to mother, no sign of nobody, lady, he said. Must got up, got away. Got away, must yes. They might have escaped. What he like? There were two or three of them, mother said. Mother said, there are two or three burglars. Whooping and carrying on slamming doors. Shutting doors. Funny, said the cop. All your windows and doors was, door was locked on the inside tight as a tick. Normally, tight as a tick is a idiom. It denotes drunk or inebriated state. The one who is in high spirit. But here, the doors are all locked. There is no sign of a stranger entering in, in the house. Downstairs, we could hear the thumping, walking heavily off the floor of the other of the other police. Police were all over the place. Doors were young to open, pulled with a jerk. The, the doors are all open now. Drawers were young to open. Windows were shot up and pulled down. Furniture fell in with dull thumbs. 
a half dozen policemen emerged out of the darkness of the friend hallway upstairs they began to ransack the floor ransack turn the house upside down pull beds away from walls tore clothes off hooks in the closets pulled suitcases and boxes off off shelves one of them found them an old sidar that roy had won in a pool tournament pool tournaments in a billiard, billiard game he won the musical instrument sidar look look here joe he said joe is the name of the police another man is telling another police man is showing the sidar the musical instrument to joe strumming it with a big paw he is just playing it with his paw the cop named joe took it and turned it over what's it he asked me it's an old siddha our guinea pig guinea pig is a kind of rodent raised for meat in in america our guinea pig used to sleep on i said it was true that a pet guinea pig we had once would never sleep anywhere except on the siddha but i should never have said so joe and the other cop looked at me long time they put the siddha back on the shelf no sign or nothing said the cop who had first spoken to mother the lady seems hysterical hysterical screaming the policeman is saying they are not they all nodded but said nothing just looked at me in the small silence we all heard a creaking in the attic the attic is the place where grandpa is sleeping grandfather was turning over in bed what's that snap joe said joe five or six cops sprang up sprang for the attic door before i could intervene or explain before the boy could say that for grandpa was sleeping upstairs sleeping in the attic they rushed to the spot i realized that it would be bad if they burst in on grandpa grandfather's unannounced or even announced he was going through a phase in which he believed that general now it's all about grandfather he believed that general meets men under steady hammering by stone wall jackson were be- beginning to retreat and even desert in the american st- american civil war meets uh, army men were retreating when they faced when stone jack a uh, stone wall jackson tried to capture them conquer them they deserted the meets army men deserted the army their troop and le- retreated withdrew one by one he had those attacks those memories in his mind so when the policeman entered his room the grandfather's room without his permission he thought the men who retreated from meets army have come for a fresh attack when i got to the attic things were pretty confused grandfather had evidently jumped to the conclusion that the police were deserters from meets army trying to hide away in his attic he bounded out of bed wearing a long flannel nightgown flannel nightgown is a sleepwear it's a super soft cloth with and extra cozy cloth a soft cloth he was in his night dress nightgown over long woolen pants a night cap and a leather jacket around his chest the cops must have realized at once that the indignant white haired old man belonged to the house indignant means provoked angry man belonged to the house but they had no chance to say so before they realized that the man belonged to this house something happened back a cowardly dog roared grandfather back it is the lines you got him lily livered cattle lily livered means covered cattle he is addressing them as covered with that he fetched the officer who found the sidar a flat handed smack he gave a slap across his face alongside his head that sent him sprawling the next moment he caught hold of a policeman and slapped him slapped across his face he fell down the other beat a ret- beat a retreat beat a retreat means a withdraw they were trying to retreat withdraw from the attack but not enough grand for the grab the sidar's gun from its holster holster mean holder holder and let fly let fly attack the report seemed to crack the rafters he fired at the policeman smoke filled the attic a cop cursed and shot his hand to his shoulder somehow he we all finally got downstairs again and locked the door against the old gentleman he fired once or twice more in the darkness and then went back to bed that was grandfather i explained to joe out of breath joe is the police officer 
he said. This Thurber introduced grandfather to the policeman. He thinks you are deserter. I say he does, said Joe. The cops were, were reluctant to leave without getting their hand on somebody besides grandfather. The night had been distinctly a defeat for them. Furthermore, they obviously didn't like the layout. Something looked and I can see their viewpoint phony. Now they know it's a false information. There are no burglars hiding in the house. They began to poke into things again. A reporter, a thin-faced wispy man, wispy thin man, came up to me. I had put on one of mother's dress, not being able to find anything else. The reporter looked at me with, a ming with mingled suspicion and interest. See, the boy is in his mother's dress, so the reporter looked at him with all suspicion and uh, curiosity. Just what the hell is the real lowdown here? What is, what is the fact going on here? He said. I decided to be frank with him. We had ghosts. I said. He gazed at me a long time as if I were a slot machine into which he had without result dropping a coin. It's like uh, he is perplexed or confused now. So he is waiting for the exact answer from Thurber. Then he walked away. The cops followed him. The one grandfather shot holding his now bandaged arm, cursing and blaspheming, blaspheming, insulting or abusing. I'm gonna get my gun back from the old bird, said the Siddhar cop. Yeah, said Joe. You and who else? The, uh, Joe, the policeman is making fun of another policeman. Already the grandfather is angry. He is having weapon in his hand. So if the stranger without his permission enters the room, what will happen? Joe realized that. So he is telling, how many of you want to go and kill yourself? You can go. In a funny way, he is asking. I told them I would bring you to the station, station house the next day. Thurber said, tomorrow I will bring you, sir. What was the matter with that one policeman? Mother asked after they had gone. Now there is a conversation among the family men. Mother is asking, what happened to that man, policeman? Grandfather shot him. I said, what for? She demanded. I told her he was a deserter of all things, said mother. He was such a nice looking young man. Shout. Why grandfather did like this? He's a handsome young man. The next day, grandfather was fresh as a daisy and full of jokes at breakfast the next morning. We thought at first he had forgotten all what had happened, but he didn't. Over his third cup of coffee, he glared at Herman and me. What was the idea of them? Cops staring hooting round the house. Staring hooting means ridiculing or loitering round the house last night, he demanded. None of you bother to leave a bottle of water beside my bed. So the person, now the ghost, comes to light. He is telling, yesterday you forgot to keep water for me. So none of you bother to leave a bottle of water beside my bed. Do you ever realize that it caused for a thirsty man to look for water in the dining room last night? So I was thirsty. I was searching for water. He had us there. Now we understood. Now the family men understood. The children and mother understood who the real ghost is. The grandpa was searching for water. He was thirsty and he was searching for water. So did he enjoy the lesson students? The incidents arouse humor and make us laugh. No doubt in it. But we all need to read the lesson and enjoy. When we read only, we will come to, we will visualize and we will we can enjoy the beauty of narration and every incident. It will definitely arouse laughter in us. Then I want you all to read and visualize the incident and enjoy the beauty of wordplay. Thank you students. Good day. Happy learning. Bye.